Namaste. How's it going? I've been asked this question a few times. Where do I begin the journey? Is it from the body to the brain or the other way around? For me, we start here, unconsciously. Yeah. The openness to accept and the willingness to learn. That's why we seek. And you didn't find my teachings randomly. You were guided here for a reason. And that is important. Yeah. Because faith, belief in a particular principle and following it yeah, until it becomes ingrained in us is the first step. The heart can really be very overpowering. Yeah. Our mind thinks, but really yeah, the heart decides. And this decision to learn yeah, is coupled with, of course, what? Yeah, sacrifices, yeah. even not just our physical effort, but also time. Yeah, and then you might already have a certain principle ingrained in you. But since you're learning, and then some of it might not agree with your belief system, yeah, and then you need to compromise. Yeah, because you need to grow a certain principle. Yeah. And when the benefit happens, yeah, you realize that it's not actually different. You might just be approaching it from another perspective. But at the end of it, uh, you achieve the same direction. You go through the same path. So, if for example, yeah. a principle begins with the body, follow that. It has a reason. Because there's no amount of intellectualization. We're still human beings. We're still made of flesh, bones, yeah. and then we need the body yeah, to become our conduit, our vehicle for higher consciousness. Yeah. If a principle focuses more on the brain, the mind, yes, it has a purpose. Because yeah, some people, yeah, they are open energetically to begin with already. Yeah. So most of the techniques they follow involve the brain already. Yeah, they just have to yeah, channel that higher awareness to the body so they connect. Yeah. So my teachings predominantly start from the earth, from the body. Because naturally, I'm an earth person. And I started this journey so low. Yeah, physically, yeah, I didn't know anything about yoga at all. I was uh, given the physical gift of strength because that's my nature, yeah, and also that's my circumstance. I was working in the fitness industry, yeah, but back then it was physical. I was enjoying it, really, yeah, and part of my job is to learn more so I can teach my students more, but never it occurred to me that the subtle energy would awaken. I was just enjoying it, so really, yeah, you have to enjoy the practice because it serves you, your nature, your circumstances, your situation. Yeah. That's why here, this is really very important. Listen to your heart because the heart will lead you. To, if, if you're happy doing things, yeah, yeah, definitely you will learn more, you will explore more, and you become more open more because that serves you. And then that will awaken channels and centers, not just in the body, but also in the brain, until yeah, they communicate yeah, harmoniously. So from the body, yeah, open the body, building your physical strength. Yeah, and then when you build physical strength, you might not just do yoga if your nature is, for example, sport. Yeah, I love weight training, so I still do my... Uh, weight training until you know, this uh, time, but not as intense as before. You know, just to keep the uh, the muscular you know, energy. If you enjoy cardio, yeah. If you enjoy uh, leisure walk or a, a jog in the morning, yes, keep it. 
Yeah? And that's part of your building physical strength. Yeah? And then just add what? Yeah? Uh, traditional techniques of yoga, if you're following a system, if you're doing my classes, those are enough. And after that, yeah, flow the breath. Because the body you know, would have to you know, become open so the breath flows within. Because our bodies are originally blocked you know, for a reason, definitely for our safety. We don't want to be awakening those centers before that time. So we need to prepare the body first and then the breath flows. And then the breath will lead you to some more subtle awareness. Yeah? So at first, physical, energetic. Yeah? You're going to use the breath to keep your body healthy internally. Yeah? So because as the breath flows, you're going to feel blockages uh, accumulating inside and before they become like um, uh, stagnation, because stagnation, energetic stagnation, is one of the, I say, causes of our disease and illnesses, then you're able to promote yeah, your physical health. Yeah? And then when you're healthy, you worry less, right? And then when you're uh, happy, when you're content, you worry less about your physical health. What? You yeah. radiate that aura. Yeah. And this aura is really very contagious. Yeah. So your uh, social, interpersonal relationship becomes healthy. And you become inspiration. Yeah. And that, 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 that's what? Yeah. You inspire people. You influence people. You become a teacher somehow to them. Yeah. And this leads to what? Some spiritual realizations at home. Yeah, I have a purpose. Yeah. And then you explore more. Yeah, really, that's my journey. Yeah? So my students are my inspiration. If I see them like progress and become happy individuals and friendships yeah, <laughs> um, happen, yeah? um, yes, it's, it's really meaningful. Then uh, you become inspired of what you see around you and then you explore more because you know, yes, the body and the energetic, the subtle elements open up, you know, you will realize there's this more there beyond what your senses perceive. And that's why you yeah, explore more. Yeah. It's healthy because you start from what? Yeah, the openness, the good intention. Yeah. Although you might start physical, which for some people might... Yeah, seem too shallow, yeah, or very basic. But what? Yeah, it doesn't really matter. But what's important is you're happy. You enjoy it. If you enjoy doing the meditation, yeah, practice more of that. But definitely, yeah. So because the brain, yeah, is the center. Yes, really, this is where the uh, pranic force is produced, the soma, and the cerebral spinal fluid. But it's not enough. So if you meditate you know, without you real or understanding the connection of your brain to the body, then you create stagnation. And this will lead to what? Overstimulation of your cranial cavity. And that's not good. So somehow you need to drain and then send the energy to your body. And it goes the same the other way. So from the body to the brain, because the body energy... Yeah, it's the potent energy, the dynamic energy, yeah, the apanavayu, and this one rises. The heart energy rises. It's science, yeah. And then here it's cool, yeah, it stays there, it descends. Yeah. So they meet, they blend. And then really the blending place where it's most meaningful is the heart. And the other ones, of course, you will be uh, realizing in the future. So whatever practice you enjoy doing now. Keep doing it. That's the yoga. So never be discouraged if, for example, you see a certain principle or a certain teaching, practicing more of that because for you, you think it's higher. No. Yeah. They think, yeah, oh, that, that particular principle might be focusing on that particular segment of what? Practitioners. Yeah. But somehow, yeah, they will learn also from you. And then you learn from them. And then you meet halfway. Yeah. So what you see externally is a representation of you internally. Right. The conflicts, the questions, the doubts, yeah, they come from here. They come from your psyche. They come from the heart. Yeah. And then when you allow the, the conflict and the issues to overpower you, 
then you lose it. That's why for me, yeah, yoga is best approach. Yeah, first, of course, with the guidance of a teacher. So the teacher will give you the progressive steps and grow it. Yeah, I know, <laughs> for example, your teacher gives you a program which will last, for example, a year, and then here you are like getting bored of it. No, because unless yeah, you've tackled the hidden essence of that lesson, yeah, you cannot progress to the next one. And then in the modern times, information, techniques, principles, they are readily available. Yeah, so don't get distracted. Yeah, stay. Enjoy it. Yeah, and then it will lead you there. Yeah. So your heart and whatever you realize in your practice, yeah, they become your internal teacher already. But of course, the teacher, your external teacher is always good to have another pair of eyes looking because your teacher has been in and out of the process many times and knows how to manage the practice. So you're guided, you're reminded constantly. So hopefully this talk yeah, inspire you yeah, to remain, to keep the faith. Yeah? So even how slow your progress is, you are... Yeah, I say developing. Yes. Because yoga is just one of the many what, um, sides of our existence. Our responsibilities, our situation, our limitations, our priorities, our tasks. And then with the, all the many distractions of the modern times, what? So what we need is come back here. Listen to your heart. You, know, you might be sway here and there. Yeah, but when yeah, doubt and apprehensions and difficulties happen, yeah, listen. Yeah, because you might uh, be, uh, I say, taking your sensation, your feelings for granted. The heart is always a good place to start. And really, during meditation, it's really here. Yeah, the heart. Yeah, leads us there. Yeah, because it's for me. This is like the the intersection. Yeah, from the brain before it descends, the heart filters it. Yeah, not just energetically. Yeah, um, physically, yes, because this is where the vital organs of respiration and circulation yeah, are located. The heart and the lungs. Yeah, before it descends, this filters the energy going down. And before our own, our panavaya rises up, the heart and this thoracic cavity filters the energy. So when we lift the energy up, yeah, it's nourishing and sealing. Thank you, and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a lovely day. Namaste.